So, All right, I have the sheet open for uh, when every god came to be. All right, perfect. So, welcome everyone. Hello, hello. Um, this is a Creator's Creation episode. I'm joined with Chastin, who will be assisting me today. Uh, my best. Mainly, he's here to list off gods because I'm baked, uh, which is why there's no face cam. Um, but I'm in a good mood to write, and uh, so Chastin's here to help me uh, out. So, I've talked about this uh, already in my own lore, um, which Chastin gets to learn about because he's here, so... Uh, but when I was writing the Before the Chaos, I have notes on who the first three gods of the world are. Um, so, in my universe, as many people know, we have our Beyond Gods. Well, what is a Beyond God? A Beyond God is a god that has some sort of law that they've put into existence. Um, basically... Imagine uh, your uh, if you decided now that death was a certain entity in the world, that would be what you'd be uh, call a beyond god, someone who has created a law that is uh, inexcusable and cannot be avoided. Um, so these aren't technically gods; they're just creatures that are powerful enough to shape the universe. Um, and that's where we start with our first three. We have Calfell, who was actually a solar dragon, uh, and the first solar dragon. Um, Welcome, uh, by the way, Grumpy. I am recording a Creator's Creation, so oh. you're on camera, kind of. Oh, no. Don't look <laughs> at me. All right. Uh, we have then Thief, who we all know from the story, the canon, on how his whole story is basically uh, he was in charge in the very beginning. Um, what isn't talked about, and I've, I talk about this a little bit in my own notes. Now, these are kind of rough notes that we made public soon. Um mm -hmm. Basically, Thief is the first of his kind and is the was a being created by the law of time. Um, he is a creature that is, in a sense, es in essence, of a law that had to be created. Um, so he is time itself, um, which is actually one of the things that where he derives his name from. Um, Thief was the first of the solar dragons and was known as a solar dragon who would feed on entire solar systems, where which is where we get the nickname in the modern days of Cataclysm, because well, if your sun and solar system's eaten by a dragon, you, you can probably understand why that would be bad. Um, <laughs> but yeah. And then lastly, we have the other god that was created by a law, Tensub. Um, a god who would basically end up um, being uh, created out of the darkness itself by that Calfell would leave behind and would eventually lead to his um, hatred of Calfell. Um so, now, the first one I'm going to say, Chastin, what's the first name, what's the first giant god listed there in the first age? The first giant god? Yeah, does it say his name? I may have not classified them by race, this is why I have you here to assist me. <laughs> okay, the, the list you told me to get on doesn't classify them by race, only by age. Okay. Um, uh, what, who do we have? Let's, let's just start with the names, because I can remember okay, by the names. Uh, so, going down the list, uh, Primordial Goddess, which I know is Genasi. Uh, yes, we have so... I yeah, Let's start with that first. We'll just go one at a time, make this easy. Yeah. Uh, so the Primordial Goddess would be a one of the only other creatures that would be considered to be created outside of uh, the existence of laws. The Primordials, as they would be, uh, are basically the first beings in my wor world. Um, in our case, the Primordial Goddess, who is unnamed in the uh, lore, is the goddess who would have been in charge at that time of that specific planet, um, which had its own name and there's a whole thing in the lore that talks about that but we're not doing that today so the primordial goddess while in this situation would be outside of the ranking we're gonna have a whole crew here during this video this is perfect we're doing our power structure boys so i mean this is gonna be made to public to you guys anyway so join in strap in and listen to what i gotta say uh otherwise you can walk away all right uh so we got the primordial goddess what's next justin uh shagnarok all right, so we know Shagnarok would technically be the first creation of Thief. Uh, Shagnarok's creation, as is known, was uh, basically as Thief would arrive, he would force himself upon the primordial goddess, and out what would come of br the birthing of that would be Shagnarok. Uh, so this is a good one to, I think I think spelt that right. If not, I will spell it right. I'll fix it in post. I can, I can spell this. I can read up the letters. Eh, that's uh, fine. Um okay. I'll fix it in post. It's no big issue as far as it goes. So that would be technically um, the first god under the, the god of time. He did technically create them and does have influence. Um, however, uh, Shagnarok would r uh, rank pretty low as well as far as the power structure. So what's next? Uh, Alenta. Ah. 
supposed sister of Thief, which is not at all correct. Um, we will go ahead and insert to the left, because I know my, uh, my hand signs here. Uh, Alenta would be at the same ranking um, and would fall under uh, Thief itself. So as we're going through this, uh, Alenta's kind of backstory um, in here. Let's see. I know I have it written in the information. Uh, Cameron, for reference, the stuff in the Before the Chaos is what I'm reading off of. Um, You're fine. I, I'm, I'm working on my own stuff. I just don't want to be alone. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Um, let's see. I'm just kind of going through here because we'll get to the other Beyond Gods here in a minute. Uh, and I want to make sure it gets on record what the whole thing uh, is. Although I may come back to this later because I cannot see it. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll come back to it later. Anyways, so yes, Alenta, the supposed sister, um, who uh, some uh, believe... Uh, oh yes, here it is. The Twelve, uh, the twelve Lords would be defeated eventually by the dragons... Uh, as we would all know, uh, but Thief would defeat the uh, would end up defeating both the dry or the. Okay, here let me read this whole thing. I did write this one stone, so I am trying to re re like read through this as best I can here. Um, there we go. So the basically the story of Valenta would be that Thief would forget about the base the two worlds that he was looking or the two gods that were uh, coming into creation at the time, which were Severta and um, uh, Litsia if I can pronounce that correctly, the goddess of light, and uh, a god of gravity. Um, basically, after ignoring them uh, and continuing on, uh, the dragon wars with the giants would continue, um, and as the gods of darkness hated the dragons, they would side with the goddess of light. Time would pass, and a few mortals would rise to become go true gods worshipped by their people. And the twelve lords, in fact, who would challenge the dragons for divine power and later thief for betraying and abandoning his watch over their planet. The twelve lords would be defeated by the dra or would defeat the dragons, but Thief would end up defeating the Twelve Lords himself and forced one of them, supposedly, to become his kin. Uh, he took and brainwashed who, uh, a person who was known at the time as Alenta uh, into his sister, a and the goddess of plague and fertility to many. Um, and so that would actually be the story. Alenta was actually one of the only Twelve Lords uh, that uh, ended up being forced into a godhood by Thief. Thief was not a... Uh, <laughs> A, he's a not friend. a nice guy. He's a dick. He he's a calculated god, is his uh, perspective. But uh, Nick, let's go on to the next one. Uh, next is Meso Musa. Meso Musa, I believe that's the Great Furnace. <laughs> no, nope, uh, you have Great Furnace separately, right under it. Who is Meso Musa? Now I gotta look it up. Because Meso what is seven and, and Great Furnace is eight. Um, Meso, let's see. Because there is a, a lot of uh, gods, but that one does not immediately catch my attention. So, let's see. Control F. Uh, no. Let's see. How's it spelled? Uh, M E S O. M U S A. M S O. I think you were gonna write a name for the gravers. You left the thing under Great Furnace blank, and then you never wrote anything. Yeah, that might have been the case. I don't think the furnace has a name. Uh, no, it no the great furnace doesn't. Oh, ah, Mesamuso, the great volcano in which the uh, fire giants worshipped. Uh, so technically, because the ten sub would be the creator of the giant race, um, for and his for his hatred of the dragons that would be created by Calfell, um, the te uh, technically uh, Mesamuso would be kind of like down here ish. Not, I'd actually rank him more like around here. Not a very powerful god. Um, if anything, this would be, uh, if I had to categorize it, it wouldn't be more than like uh, the furnace itself as far as power goes. So, um, okay, what's the next one? Uh, ignoring the Great Furnace. Uh, the Great Furnace? Uh, well, that technically, great, technically great actually, the Great Furnace falls under the Mesomusa because by one rank in this case because of the fact that if we think about it, um, the Mesa Musa was created by the fire giants. Uh, the Great Furnace was created by a subset of the of another giant race. Um, the Stone Giants specifically uh, would end up creating this after being created from a um, bastard race of uh, one of the sons. So yeah, all right. What's next? Uh, the Lady of Time. 
Yes, uh, an interesting character as far as it goes. Um, so the Lady of Time is technically one of the first true gods we see um, that is a woman who rises up in power. Um, so she would rank <laughs> under Alenta. However, um, she is actually uh, under her own kind of category over here, I would roughly say. I might actually put her all the way, I don't know. Her ranking, though, um, she was actually extremely powerful as one of the uh, only gods to basically have a race that was militarily um, extremely active. Um, and she was a former princess of the uh, race. So, um, so she was an actual true born elf. Correctly, she's no dwarf. No, she is an elf. Uh, oh, she's yeah. a high elf. Yes. Because uh, this is oh, talking about... Huh? The snow dwarf god uh, we will get to later, Cameron. It's lower on the list. Yes. Um, all right, what's, what would be next? Uh, Calthoon is next. So Calthoon was created by Alenta as one of her children. Um, so I'm actually going to start to uh, color these a little bit to kind of keep track of some things uh, while we're going over here. So we're going to just call this, um, we're going to have some true gods here. Uh, we're going to do 10 sub, um, basically meaning one of his creations. Uh, we're going to do Thief over here and then have Calfell as the last one uh, and then we'll have independent because in some cases uh, like the primordial goddess would not be a god under any case but isn't technically a true god um, so we'll go with our yellow for our true gods uh, for 10 sub as he is a very assholeish god we'll go with red um, we'll do our traditional blue with Thief. And as we have Calfell, we'll do a green. And independent, I will just leave with a grayish color. So, yeah, we're going to kind of stick with that. So that makes it a little easier to work off of. And I immediately picked the wrong gray. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, get these quickly color-coded just so that way we can keep track. As these would all fall under 10 subs own creation. This would be one of our true gods. Oop, if I can do the color correction. There we go. Uh, one moment. Do, do, do. Technically, yeah. And then, okay. And then we'll have Calfells right there. Or, oops, I chose the wrong green. There we go. That uh, works. It, it, it'll cover it. All right. So, um, what was the god? So, we had Calthoon, you said? Yep. So it would be Calthoon would fall right around here. He would be the first to fall under Alenta. All right. Uh, what's next? Uh, next is Tanarok. Again, another god that would end up being created by uh, Alenta herself. Um, right, uh, not rising up in power, but gaining his power straight from her. Next. Uh, next is the snow dwarven god Saraseki. So Sarazeki is technically um, a dragon. Because in my world lore, <laughs> beholders are a corrupt form of dragon. It's the best okay. way I can describe it. They they are like, because of the fact that um, great elder brain dragons exist, um, they are in a sense, uh, imagine them as a failed um, like experiment of a dragon. They are most likely some sort of half-breed or a dragon trying to achieve something outside of its own power. So technically... <laughs> Sarazeki would be a uh, part of the lore with the uh, with Cal, uh, Calfell. Okay. Uh, Safira. Safira is con is a daughter of Calfell. However, as she would be um, ranked uh, below the Sigma Dragons, um, she will actually go here. Um, she is one of the. Gods that isn't directly uh, related to Calfell uh, outside of uh, her relation to one of the Six Sigma Dragons. Okay, what's next? Speaking of them, the Six Sigma Dragons. So yes, they would all be the first uh, children of Calfell. Arguably, um, many of them are considered to be more powerful than um, Lento was and the Twelve Lords. So we will actually put them up here. Um, this is only if they are for fighting together, which is not that often to happen, as most of them don't like each other or have just gone to sleep. Um, okay. So Although, if you can wake them all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so well, one, of next? Really move. one of them's really fat. However, uh, everyone's most hated god, Stone the Corrupt. 
So Stone the Corrupt is technically um, a god, a, a true god. Um, he is a risen god. He did rise up to the creation uh, and became the god of death. Uh, which he hated uh, and immediately uh, slacked off and found someone else to do the work for him. But he was, in a sense, created under uh, Alenta's uh, decision as they gained their divinity by sitting at her table. Okay. Uh, next is Himkin uh, from the beginning of Corruption. We are on the next stage. Yes. So Himkin is a ranking under Kalfel. Um, he is a demigod, uh, which actually makes him extremely low in the power ranking. Um, in my opinion, I would put him down to almost like a 12th ranking, and I'm not going to go much lower than this. This would be where I would put my demigods in general. Um, he does draw relation. Um, he is related to one of the um, uh, si uh, dra great dragon houses, but the demigod power is gained through his um, notoriety in battle. So he's not in. He is technically Calfels because the fact that he is a dragon, uh, but by all accounts, he does rise up to his own power. Uh, so this one is a kind of a mix. Okay, next. Uh, Benarmon. Oh fuck. <laughs> I have no fucking clue who that is. I don't think I've ever seen Benarmon. Right, I haven't read every. How do you page spell it? On any of your pages. How do you spell it? A uh, B A N. A R M O. A A. Wait, what was it? It's B A N A R M O N. B A, not B E. B A. Yep. Oh, he's a Eldera god. Ah, the man, the man who invented Bananium. No, I think he is. Um, yes, he is the Great Turtle, Bernard. So, I, for reference, I made this back when I was in art school. <laughs> this was... I was still in a very weird uh, creative phrase. So, um, since he's a turtle, does he fall under a dragon? He's not technically a, uh, related to any of these gods. He is a true god. <laughs> he is an independent god. Or is he god. independent? He is an Men independent god, yeah. <laughs> Make him rise higher in the god ranks. We must worship. <laughs> uh, yeah, he is technically... I, I'm going to put him over here. He is technically an independent god that has no relation with anybody. <laughs> he's just... But he's ranked at 12? Uh, he's ranked wow. at yeah, 12. He's not... He, he'd be considered a demigod because the Testudalo are not a very, like, massive race. They're not uh. very expansive. Um, and they are very prone, like the other... Um, turtle races that I have, or tortoise races I have, um, to want to travel, so it's very common for the many of them to have mixed religions. Um, That's fair. I'd also like to say, is he really the source of banana bananium? No. Damn. No, but he is a god worshipped for good fortune and happiness. Um, and it's Sadly, one, probably he's the dead. only god- No, he's not dead. Um, he just doesn't oh. do anything. He's asleep. Motherfucker, or, wake up! That's a lady, he, he's alive still, yeah. Now, of course, he sleeps. No one deserves up. happiness in the current age. That's fair. Well, right. fucker, wake up. World's in danger. Uh, next is Kalam. Kalam. Another god. I don't remember Kalam. off the top of my name. Uh, A-K-A-L-A-M. You know, it's funny. I knew I spelled it like that. Oh, of course he's a Vedan god. Oh, I think I know who this <laughs> is. Um, <laughs> this is one of our origin gods for them. Uh, yes. So there's their crime lords, their military I have now structure. found my favorite coffee. Nice. Blonde roast. Uh, blonde roasts are higher in uh, caffeine. Uh, darker roasts are actually uh, worse for you in every way. I know, and I like the blonde roast for one reason. It tastes less bitter. Yep, god of life. Kalam is pictured as the god of life. Uh, so... Uh, Kalam is one of many split-offs, uh, as each of these are, minus Saya and Woden. Uh, so, Kalam, Urist, and, uh, Cernan here, who are all basically, uh, split-off of Stone the Corrupt's personality when he gave up his, uh, position as a god, in a sense, to go fluffing about with the, uh, people, uh, at the beginning of Corruption, uh, because he wanted to lead a nation, again. Um, like an idiot. So Kalam is technically not a true god, but they fall under the House of Stone, the Corrupt. So we're going to make a new um, thing here. Stone's uh, bullshit. You know what? That's a good way to pull, put that. Um, 
We're gonna go with. The, the, there is no other way to put that. We're gonna go with a really bright pink. Um, I'm sorry that there's no other way to put. So that. Kalam's power is actually they. I would say they're around here. Um, they're actually pretty decent. Um, as a god, um, they do rank overall pretty high as uh, the god of life, um, considering they are an origin god. I'm just gonna put that down there. All right. And let's go ahead and pinkify that. All right, what's next? Uh, Kingstone. That's what you have marked next. Yep. So another one that's like was it another split off. Uh, this was the evil personality of uh, Stone that he gave up. So Kingstone uh, was a dwarven god I... created by Stone's most darkest thoughts. I I do have a question. Yes. If all his evil left him and all his good left him, is that why he was just a bastard by the time we got to him? Oh, we're about to get better. What's the next one, Chastin? Uh, Earth the Pure Black. Yes, his all, all his decent mentality, his humanity, anything that he cared about people went to Earth. The how'd he die? Uh, Earth? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you remember the guy oh, you... Wait. Oh, that was Earth. Yeah, he, well, he died in that agency fails. No, yeah, yep. I remember. And what <laughs> Earth was trying to do was trying to unify the three personalities to um, bring back and uh, finally defeat the original, the uh, like origin source. Because um, two of these were already dead. He lost his first battle, and we never heard from him again. Yes, yeah, St because Stone the Corrupt, or as you all know him as the Old High King, uh, was a very powerful god. Um, he was physically uh, just a massively pain in the ass to fight. Um, but his biggest weakness was he sucked at magic. Like m He had no spells. Um, his magic items did, though, uh, the few oh, he could the, use. He was weak to force. He had that going yes. for him. Yes, he I was. also want to point out that, yes, he had very little magic. Mm-hmm. I um, say that as a player who ate his magic. Yes. Uh, all right, what's next? So speaking of the High King fluffing about, we have the High Queen. Yes. Uh, Bertha, technically, who is not a god <laughs> by any yeah. right, is she She is technically uh, what we would An call... independent? Nope. She is created by stone um, because she's given her fight. power. She has no power, though. <laughs> Technically, so that's why I'll rank her at 13. Because while she was revered as a god and she did have the ability to create life um, through her anvil, um, her godly powers were very limited. Um, and supposedly she's also the origin of some of the Warforged race. To be yeah. fair, in the current age, she was losing to two level 20s in a fight. So, I mean... Uh, yeah, her uh, by the current age, she raises up to about an 11. Um, and her daughters all rank higher than her, which we'll get to uh, probably on the next episode. Because I'm only going to do 30 minutes of this for tonight. Because I don't want to you know, overwhelm, you know, because it's a lot to go through. But, yeah. Uh, next is Ila Ugbo, uh, the mother. Yes, yeah, then, uh... who is the god that Stone created to basically say, go slack off for a whole age. Uh, Ella Ugabao is um, a goddess of death who was an extremely kind god uh, and really liked uh, mortals. Uh, and Stone basically punished her and threw her away like nothing um, because of that. Oh. Uh, yeah, she. Uh, Again, there's a whole story about her. Being. Oh, yeah, Stone was not a good. He was a warlord. He was a dwarf who had been lived in. who raised and lived in an age that was nothing but war. Not Men, it, went, that's all they did. So, and that mentality never left him, which is a big issue. Uh, what's the next one? Had he received uh, next, therapy, he might be better. Yeah. Next is Regalia. Regalia. Uh, I don't know that one. Is that. Oh, it's a Nogon? Is it? Which one? Let me see. Because uh, it sounds about right, but, uh, you know, it's been a while. Yeah, Regalia, another creator god. Um, it's interesting how I, I've depicted all my creator gods as gods of fertility. <laughs> um, well, I mean, if you're going to create something, you got to be able to fuck. Yeah, that's true. Um, she So Regalia is a god that would come under the gnolls that would fall under one of uh, Thief's creations. Um, she wouldn't, she'd probably rank roughly around the same ranking as Klom and such, because the gods from Incremia were not very strong, um, overall, so Regalia wouldn't be very high up there in ranking. Okay. Uh, Merkpaw the Brown. Ah, god created by Regalia. Um, so, yes, this would be, while still under God of Thief, because Regalia doesn't get an, uh, none of her, um, children actually managed to do a massive amount, um... Merkpaw would be considered... 
not very strong overall as a god, but he would rank up there still. Um, so we'll keep him about there. Uh, next is the Great Wolf. Ah, uh, yes, the Great Wolf. Uh, so known as the Keeper of the Forest. Uh, fun thing, they're not actually a um, proper god. <laughs> Um, they would rank, uh, as a very powerful druid. <laughs> nice. Uh, that basically fooled everyone into thinking they were a great wolf that was so protecting the, a massive forest, which... So, the first version of, um, uh, <laughs> Ahmed. Yeah. So, this, yeah, this is basically what we would call... So, if I had to, um, here, insert a column here, and we just, uh, cleared all these to make these reset. This ranking right here would be... I fooled uh, everyone into thinking I'm a god. Uh, because that's basically all they had um, in common. Uh, is uh, So, false divinity. Yeah. None of them actually had any uh, true power. Uh, so, all right. What's uh, My favorite god from this age, Ogre in the Sky. <laughs> <laughs> not, again, uh, technically not a god. <laughs> Uh, but the, best uh, this age. He, the ogres are actually, like orcs, are technically, uh, would be considered descendants of Tensub and his giant race. Um, so, uh, but the ogre in the sky did have a demigodhood, um, though the problem was, um, they weren't, they weren't a god, but they were a god. Um, they partially rose out of bullshittery. No, they were a, uh, demigod, uh, but the thing was, is they got in their demigodness because they were related to the Cloud Giant King. <laughs> um, no. they were half orc, half Cloud Giant, <laughs> which is what ogres, uh, will become, do become in my world overall, which is also why they're extremely intelligent. Okay. Uh, next is Naro. Oh, Naro, yes, who go the god of many names, the god of chaos. Um, so, this is one of the only gods that Tensub would factually, um, manage to create. Um, he, Nero is described as a god created by the Toth, but he has actually been created by many races, um, in air quotes, uh, because his, it seems that his concept of chaos is, uh, worshipped in just everywhere. Um, so anybody who wishes for that is, uh, worshipping Nero. Um, he is Tensub's direct subordinate and one of the most dangerous gods in my world, in my opinion, um, as he has no agenda. He just wants to watch the world, um, kind of burn. Uh, Petrification? this, yeah. this next one is someone in this call's favorite, uh, some guy named Normak. Ah, so Normak, uh, is technically under Calfell, cause, uh, he is dragon. Um, he would rank roughly around where uh, the same rank as uh, Merc Paw, because in my lore, Normak is re related as a cousin to one of the main seven dragon houses, which technically means he is a uh, divine being from the Six Sigma Dragons uh, bloodline. So he is technically, while well, independent, um, would fall under Calfell and would rank roughly around. Um, Mid-powered, uh, if he had gained more followers uh, and had chosen a wider um, group of associates or a different domain, he would have gained more. Um, he had a lot more p chance to ri uh, rise higher, but instead um, was a god who chose to focus on the misrepresented, we'll call them. <laughs> the underserved. He, yes. he, he was customer service, god damn it. Yeah, basically. Someone had to be. <laughs> we are now in the Age of Chaos. This is Rompon. Okay. okay, Age of Chaos, Rompon? Rompon. Rompon. Fun god. Um, if I remember it, he is a god of... Rompon oh, Dragon. Oh, I remember Rompon. So this is actually, um, when I was making uh, Clash of Legends, Rompon is, was one of going to be one of our big dragons you had to fight. This was Can I a, borrow his design? <laughs> well, we this is our art. We found this on Deviant Art, and we were uh, we just basically used this as, hey, this is kind of the general idea. We want a giant colossal earth dragon, um, you know, that was like very mountainous. So we needed a representation sample that we kind of roughed up. Um, I can't remember who. Someone might have known the artist, or this might have been concept art from a video game. Uh, but yeah, so Rompon. Um, <laughs> is a god of the Deerco, and that's what he looks like. Um, he is what sunk their land, <laughs> technically. Uh, Rompon would actually only be at the same rank as no Normak. Um, he's not... Normak can take him. He's not very powerful. Um, the big thing is he was stronger than Himkin, 
Um, even though, if I remember, I think in the lore, they're actually related. I think Rompon is Himkinstrick's son, um, but I cannot remember. Okay, next one. Uh, then we have, we, we have Selmoon. Selmoon. How do you spell that one? <laughs> S-E-L-M-U-N-E. Selmoon. Uh, oh, it's another deer co Oh, found it! <laughs> Another water dragon. Uh, so yeah, the, these are the four dragons that would uh, gain um, notoriety amongst uh, the uh, um, Dierko. So again, another one that would be uh, a very unique dragon. It would also create the first water or create the first water dragon um, subrace. Um, so uh, for what they would do, and we actually have their stats kind of done, um, which is uh, kind of cool. So let's see. The fact we... that Normax is on the same level as these guys just makes me happy. Yeah, see, we actually have, um, like, the, this is what the modifications were, what we were going to kind of build off of. Uh, and then we had what they could basically do um, based on what they would have. And then there was going to be loot, stuff like that, that we would get as uh, you ran through. Some of this stuff will get introduced in the Forgotten Age, or in the uh, Age, yeah, uh, the First Age um, campaign, where you guys will actually get to see a lot more of this. Um, okay. So, yeah, Sel Selmune would be there. Next is Arminia. Why is... I'm going to take a bet that's going to be another damn dragon. Let's see. What's I'm if they're dragons, really, I'll have them all in order, which I'm really about this next and after Arminia is also a dragon by the name. Or what's uh, the, How do I spell it? A-R-M-I-N-I-A. -I -I -A. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Guy dragon. Yep. All right, so again, same thing, kind of uh, another descendant. So I'm just going to insert two columns here, uh, and we're going to de-ink them real quick. Um, this will all get a proper and pretty design later on when we're actually at that point. Uh, but for now, this kind of works. What's the next dragon, Chastin? Uh, Gomo. Yeah, Gomo. I, I was going to say, I know the both of them. Uh, I'll, I'll show what they are because I know the audience will want to see for those who do watch these. Um, but Gomo, if I remember, is a fire dragon. No, wait, Gomo's not a dragon. Gomo is a Shibuka god. Ooh, okay. So I'm wrong. What was Gomo's whole thing? Is Gomo a deer? Because that's Kong. Oh, Gomo Rock. <laughs> because of the drug that's named after him. He's uh, a drug. Yes, and I think this might be a... Uh, I'm trying to... I'm, just digging around. Yeah, here he is. So he's one of the old Gronian gods, or, or uh, the Hylionas, as we're calling them now. Uh, for reference, this race is basically a frog-like people. Um, we have some art design I need that, to move over they, here. They were the Grung. Yes. They died. They are... Uh, it's a Salmorian-like god that they pray to Gomo for protection, uh, but basically not much is known. So they were praying to an Ub Ubika to not... to keep the Ubika from eating them. Um, so Gomo, it, while it is a Salmorian, actually does, they are Salmorians, or the Ubika, are not actually, uh, draconic. Um, they come over here and are an independent race of their own, um, that no one is actually sure to this day where they came from. So Gomo and his power ranking would be at the same ranking as a demigod. Uh, our next is Calfell the Risen. Another ooh, okay. Is it, wait, is it Calfell? Calfell the Risen. That's what you've written. Yeah, I'm just looking at something. Let me pull something up real quick. Did I misspell? I did. This was supposed to be Kedliz, not Calfell. <laughs> when I was writing this stone, <laughs> I knew I made some mistakes. There we go. That's what I was talking about, not Kalfell. I was like, wait, what? What? Okay. Kalfell, so Kalfell is a god of the tieflings, uh, but the thing is, he's not a tiefling. He's an Eric Cochran. He tricked the tieflings yep. into thinking he was a, a tiefling. <laughs> um, what a trickster. So Eric Cochran's um, are an interesting race. I believe they technically are considered independent because no one's 100% sure where they come from, but in actuality, all the avionic races um, technically all originate from dragons uh, in my world. So they're a half species of dragon and some sort of bird. So yes, a dragon fucked a chicken at some point, and this is what we got. Um, so 
yeah. So what's the god? Uh, what's the, the it was Calfell. So Calfell would technically rank because uh, he is a decent or a pretty high ranking deity. I'd say roughly around here. Um, and the Risen is a a fun name he got himself. Um, it, as a joke to his wings. Um, nice. Yeah. You know, because no other tieflings had wings, but he did, uh, and no one thought that suspicious. Can't. Okay. Can uh, I say next, this? Whatever dragon fucked a chicken, do better. I mean, next Saphir have, fucked uh, Mizna. Damn. That's even worse. We got a whole race uh, of it. Uh-huh. Next is the Lucky. Ah, yes. So the Lucky, if I remember correctly, is the giant... No, that's the stolen. The Lucky is... Oh, yes, he is an independent being. Technically, the Lucky is actually a remnant of a mix of a tabaxi and one of the primordial essences. So, technically, he does fall under the primordial goddess, which means we do have to give her her own section, because she did create a god by accident. Um, that really, it did make a, a major uh, impact. Primordial. You um, could just call them the primals. No, I, I mean, well, this is just so I can keep track of it when I'm uh, going back and uh, making a book out of it. So, we're going to go ahead and do that, and then we're going to make a bunch of extra columns here. Boop. Mm. There are quicker ways to do this. Uh, I'm lazy. All right. So um, that was efficient. <laughs> yes. What was the name again? Uh, the lucky. Yes. So the lucky, his ranking, he actually was able to um, stand at the same rank as Stone the Corrupt. Um, he was a very powerful god. Um, you just that... went one below the Stone. No, Stone, stone. the Corrupt's on the. Oh, I did. Yeah. Thank you. I figured you'd want that to be accurate. Yep. Um, but, yeah, he would be extremely um, powerful as far as uh, his ability for what he was doing. Uh, only thing is, he didn't realize that the extent of his ability with elements and just ended up focusing on hunting down Red Lyrium, which is a magical substance in my world, which would grant him even more fucking power. Uh, but that would also end up killing his body because his physical body couldn't uh, contain it anymore. Which is why he actually is still a spirit in the Isle of Man. Um, and you could have met him until someone fucking nuked it. <laughs> Whoa. Yes. <laughs> so, but, um, all right, uh, what's the next Take one? Take move. Yeah, right. Uh, the, stole, uh, the Stolen. Ah, so the Stolen, he is a um, god of uh, ten subs. He is uh, the prince uh, that would become king um, of the giants who would rebel against his father um, in actual wanting to help the uh, native races. Um, so, in all actuality... Uh, He's actually the reason most of the mortal races survived, because Stone didn't want them. Uh, Thief didn't want them. Um, he, as the Giants, is one of the main few people who did try to protect people. Um, we're going to take a break real quick. Uh, we may come back immediately afterwards and make another episode. That'll be up to what's going on. Uh, but otherwise, we're going to call that first episode there.